Um, so it's been nice having that extra development time and experience from the first game, as well as the new Grace engine, which is the proprietary engine we built specifically for Two Worlds 2. Uh, you'll see a lot of improvements right off the bat as far as environmental textures and lighting um, and things like that, which is you know one of the things that, that Reality Pump is really really skilled in is creating these really lush environments. Lighting is the other thing, as you'll see as I'm running through, like you'll see lightning flashing and things like that. Um, you'll see th things like light have heat distortion and all that kind of stuff. So just having a really kind of immersive and flexible environment. And that's kind of what the Grace Engine has allowed us to do, is, uh, is develop all three simultaneously, the PS3, 360, and PS3, so that we don't have that, that kind of disconnect where it's developed on the PC with like the mouse keyboard in mind and the, the graphics card of a, you know, upper end PC kind of in mind. Um, so we developed all three of them simultaneously and you know, tailored them specifically for that platform. Uh, now as far as conversational things, we did go away from the first game from that cut back and forth kind of thing yeah. to having a little bit more freedom for the player to move around during conversations and blur out the background and kind of make the set pieces pop a little bit more. Makes it a little bit more engaging. But the way that the actual leveling system is designed is kind of more freedom based. Um, where with each level you're granted parameter points, which you can kind of allocate between strength, skill, stamina, stuff like that, and then skill points, which you decide you allocate to magic or range or trade skills, you know, warrior mechanic, whatever, be it defensive, lock picking, all these different things. So you kind of build your own character as you see fit, as opposed to from the outset of the game saying like I am a warrior, so I am going to poke things with sticks the entire game. Um, and at some point, if you want to, there are places in the game where you can use the in-game currency and get like, you get the, all the points refunded and kind of reallocate them if you feel like you missed steps along the way or you know you kind of trended one way and you want to kind of go back and explore something else. Um, now, because of that system, we just we wanted to have something we could switch between equipment quickly because um, obviously the kind of equipment you want to be wearing for magic casting things and and you know sword combat are completely different. Um, so we bound three armor sets to the D-pad. So if I get naked real quick mm. and throw okay. on... Okay. <laughs> I'm going to hit the get naked button. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Once it slows up, you can actually see using the D-pad, I can quickly switch between these different armor sets. That's pretty uh, cool. So, and you can do that in the heat of combat. And obviously I just have melee equipment right now. But, uh, you know, being able to switch between different range combat mechanics, stuff like that. Um, were you, was that like an auto lock on or were you doing that, uh, were you It's just a general targeting. Okay. You, you get a direction. It's, it's, it's one of those, it's a, it's kind of like the, the loosely guided. Cool. It's, it's, you control your character, but at the same time it kind of helps you center towards it. Cool. And naturally kind of moves the combat towards it. Um, we're talking about the alchemy system. Yeah, there's, we have the alchemy system, which is, uh, so, yeah, I mean, you guys play a lot of, you guys all kind of have some sort of experience with the first game. So a lot of the mechanics, uh, and I was trying to collect a couple of these things real quick. Where did the other guy go? Oh, he's in the water. Um, but a lot of the same, a lot of the mechanics from the first game do make a reappearance. The crafting system, uh, similar, similar crafting system, except instead of just stacking things on top of each other, you actually break it down into core materials, which I'll show you in a second. And as soon as these guys would die, so kind of like The Witcher. Uh, yeah, to a degree. Okay. So I want to go to the alchemy system. I can take. Let's see. You can combine all sorts of different types and then kind of synth them into different different things. And you can name them whatever you want. So it's easy to keep track of because there's so many combinable items. There's over like 400 different items you can combine cool. and collect. So all the effects are different. You can combine potions with other potions and things like that. So you can you can name it whatever you want. It'll save. The, the recipe and what it did, how long it lasts, everything like that. And you can either save that or you can scrap it or whatever. Um, can you poison yourself by accident? You can, there are negative effects that can cut, like you can stack certain items and it'll give you like, you know, plus 10 strength, but it'll also do damage over time. Cool. Or, or it'll balance like, you know, lowered accuracy with higher strength, stuff like that. So there's all sorts of balancing effects and things. Like, things. Um, now, as far as the crafting system I talked about, you guys are familiar with the first one where it's like, I found the helmet of the, the eagle, which is like the helmet of the eagle, so Superglue was my friend, and I somehow combined them to make plus one. Um, 
So we want to do something. We wanted to kind of stick on that track in this game, but like at the same time, make it a little more, make it, make it, uh, make sense a little bit more logistically. So you can actually take your weapons to the anvil and break them down in the core components. You can see it yields iron, wood, and steel. The quantities over there on the right. And if I break these suckers down, uh, I can go in to other weapons, and if I have the right materials, I can upgrade it. Now it'll tell me the stats that we upgrade. In this case, 24 damage. Um, and it'll also upgrade, it'll open these slots, so the more that you upgrade a particular weapon, the more you can add like runes and crystals to it to further augment the statistics and things like that. So you can have different weapons with fire or ice or whatever it tends to them. And kind of same, similar to Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance too. Uh, yeah, in a certain respect. So that you have different different items for different situations, different <coughs> armor sets and everything like that. Because the card system from the first game makes a return again as well. But it's a lot more fleshed out, and a lot, a lot more fleshed out. Like to the point where there's so many spells in this game that we're going for a Guinness Book of World record. Guinness Book of World. Nice. We're going for a world record. Yeah. Is that no, like actually a thought that you want to set a record? No, it was just like was we just were sitting around one day and we're like, you have more things than anybody else. And I'm just like, you know, we should apply for a record. <laughs> exactly, dude. And so I just emailed Guinness Book of World Records, so they have to come out and like certify it like at on location or something like that. And they you have to go through all of them. No, they actually they have there will be, get will be an entry in the like two thousand eleven video game Guinness Book of World Records that they release every year. But they have they have certain on site certifications that they do. Wow. And so we I have to we have to arrange like a meeting and they're really famous. It started off the original number based on the number of cars and the number of like levels and stuff was ten to the thirty sixth power. Oh and it's been chiseled down to something that is actually QAable. <laughs> <laughs> so that it won't take fourteen billion yeah. years to test. So yeah you can see some of the little crystals and stuff like that. Oh, there we go. That's some pretty cool looking environment stuff there. Yeah. Um, so this is the Oculus. So, it's an eyeball and it floats. Yeah, so it's an eyeball, and what it is is each one, it, it, you get different ones throughout the game. Um, some of them are real simple, you just fly around with, and you can see there's kind of that distortion and, and light kind of uh, flood on it. It's different ones have different visual effects to them, where they'll be clearer or like they'll have tints on them and things like that. And it's based on you collect them by ripping them out of the skulls of monsters and enemies nice. throughout the course of the game. Nice. So like, uh, you know, a werewolf eye versus like a spider eye versus like a zombie eye all have different traits to them. And some of them even have offense abilities, like the, I think the dragon one is one where you can you can trigger it to like explode. So if you wanted to go into like a camp of enemies or like approach like a powerful enemy or something like that, you have to jump on them. You can cause this to explode and then it'll immediately pop back to your character and then you can start, you know, firing ranged at him or nuking him with, with a mage or whatever. Um, but yeah, and then the variety of environments again is, like I said, the reason why we kind of wanted to incorporate the Oculus into the game. What is it, three huge islands? Uh, it's two big, it's one huge island, one big island, two smaller islands, and one itty bitty island. Okay, nice. so there's islands all over Yeah, so there's a bunch of different islands. Um, you know, and there, there's a lot of stuff that, that gives us some flexibility about um, but yeah, you can see a lot as far as visually, as far as the yeah. water and everything. Uh, games come a long way, and they did some cool stuff with with the way that the like light works and things. If you come from dark areas to bright areas real quick, it'll have that kind of like natural eye flare where it'll it'll bleach like the distance, and then it'll slowly come into focus, but with this weird fade in it. So um, yeah, they've come a long way visually, if, if nothing else, with the Grace Engine. Uh, yeah, with all the can you kill civilians? Can. Oh, it's not a good idea. But I'm not going to. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're that guy. I am that guy. I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can kill civilians, and um, but there is like a notoriety thing where if you keep if you kill somebody, like you need to leave the city before you like you you know you can yeah. escape. And if you do it a couple times, like you'll become familiar. But there's no the way we wanted to do it is a little bit more like natural where. You know, people have been talking about you, so they, the guards will kind of notice you. Cool. And even when you don't, have the, you don't have your swords out, they'll kind of like slow down as you walk by them. And you'd be like, is that that guy who stabbed Bob last week? <laughs> I think like, it might be. Is that him? Will the guards, if you do it enough, will the guards just start randomly attacking you? The, if you do it too many times within a certain period <coughs> of, of game window time, the, when you come back into town, they'll be like, hey, that is definitely the dude that killed Bob. Let's stab him in the neck. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> take care of that problem right yeah. quick. Yeah. Cool.